stories about the Sucker Genome Project we've been working on uh, and talk about the implications of, uh, of this genome assembly for catastomic specific whole genome duplication. So um, as uh, we've heard so far in the session uh, quite extensively, there have been a lot of whole genome duplications in, uh, in fishes. I'm showing you here a phylogeny that shows a few of these examples. Um, the most famous that you probably all heard of is the Telia specific uh, duplication event. Um, but there's also, as, as previously mentioned, salmon specific duplications, uh, a lineage specific duplication in carp plus goldfish, uh, and then other, other groups like sturgeons have had a series of these events. Uh, my talk today is focused on one that we've, we've sort of forgotten about in, in large part of the literature in, in recent years, which is catastomity. Uh, these are commonly called suckers, um, and they're an interesting group, I think, because they're sister to uh, the uh, cyprinids, which include uh, zebrafish, um, which is a nice uh, sort of diploid outgroup relative, uh, although there is some phylogenetic uncertainty here. Um, and uh, catastomas are also interesting in the context of comparisons with sal salmonids, which are auto uh, polyploids. There's, there was a time when, sal when a catastomid genome duplications was a really hot topic back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, as I said, it's sort of fallen out of favor. Um, so there were science and nature papers, and then uh, since we're at evolution, I thought I'd show the uh, American Naturalist paper as well. Um, these are in the 1980s, and, uh, and uh, we also saw the, uh, the one, of, one of the best cover illustrations of the book on genome duplication. We saw this two talks ago. Um, uh, but my point here is that there's been a lot of interest in catastomic genome duplication historically. Most of these were done with uh, karyotypes, cell, um, uh, cell smears, uh, chromosomal smears, uh, and alizyme data back uh, more than 40 years ago. There's some really rich literature here, and I want to encourage um, people to, to go back to these old papers because people thought really deeply about these questions, so tip, tip of the cap to them. Um, but now here we are 40 years later and we have the opportunity with the, the changes in technology to actually go and test some of the hypotheses laid out in these, um, in these papers. So I'm really excited about that. As an example of what's in these papers, here's one from uh, American Naturalist, again, that looked at a variety of different species of catastomic fishes. The columns are different alizyme loci. Um, and the shading represents whether there's two copies. The shading represents two copies that are being expressed uh, the unshaded boxes represent loci where there's only a single copy expressed. So a lot of these genes, about 50%, have undergone a reduction from two copies back down to one. So based on the, these kinds of studies, we expect that in catastomity, about 50% of the genes should be uh, single, should have reverted back to the single copy or diploid state. Um, so to summarize some of this literature, we've seen a lack of tetrasomy. Uh, I didn't talk about that, but basically, Chromosomes uh, form pairs rather than quadrivalents. Um, and, and based on this literature, people have sort of concluded that uh, catastomic fishes are the result of an allopolyploid event, so hybridization of two different species. And that that occurred based on fossil record around or at least 60 million years ago. And then finally, we expect from the allozymes that about 50% of duplicated genes uh, should be expressed. So we want to follow up with this with uh, uh, current technologies. So we use um, uh, we selected one species, razorback suckers, Iraq and Texanus, uh, and, and sequence the gen genome of this fish using um, a variety of, of approaches, nanopore sequencing as well as Illumina, uh, and we have high C uh, data that's still um, still being uh, sequenced right now. So even without the high C, we end up with a pretty pretty com uh, pretty good pretty well contiguous. Uh, genome, 1.8 megabase Conte in the 50s, so we're pretty happy with that. Hopefully that gets better with high C. Um, and then we've also, in addition to sequencing the genome, we, we did tissue-specific uh, RNA-seq, uh, as well as we have some methylation data that we can look at as well for understanding patterns of expression across uh, tissues. Um, so the first thing we did, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but we compared our razorback sucker assembly to zebrafish. There's a green line up here that looks like essentially a one-to-one -one, uh, conserved symphony between razorback sucker and zebrafish. Um, I assure you, if you zoom in on this, you'll see that there's actually two overlapping contigs throughout the, uh, the, um, um, these genes on this uh, uh, figure. And so basically, there's two copies of each gene relative to one copy in zebrafish for the most part. 
If you have good eyesight, you might notice that there's an interesting gap here on the left side of the screen. Uh, if we zoom in on this region, you can see that uh, there's nice symptomy for, for part of chromosome four, this is zebrafish chromosome four, but then a large apparent gap. So what's going on there? This is the long arm of zebrafish chromosome four. Look at the G zebrafish genome paper, and sure enough, uh, chromosome four is a uh, major sex determining, uh, sex associated region um, in that species. And not only that, but this region uh, lacks uh, obvious orthologs in other sequence fish genomes. And so it looks like this is a zebrafish specific region, and that's why we don't see it in suckers, even though they're relatively closely related. So different sex determining <laughs> mechanisms in uh, zebrafish as compared, as compared to uh, our Pathostomy suckers. The next thing we wanted to look at was this, uh, what happens to duplicated genes following whole genome duplication event. So here I'm showing our diploid comparison <coughs> zebrafish. The genes in the center are from zebrafish. Uh, and then we look at the two copies in our duplicated sucker genome, Razorback sucker genome. And uh, for the most part, uh, we see very strongly conserved symptomy. This is just a representative uh, five megabase window. Um, what we see is if we separate the two Razorback subgenomes, the two duplicated sets of chromosomes, um, almost every gene in this uh, region is actually uh, uh, is still present. That was really surprising to us, given that we expected only about 50% of the genes would be retained as duplicates. Um, the other point I want to make is that despite 120 million years of evolutionary divergence between these two species, we see, still see really, really strong conserved symptoms. These were both surprising to us. Uh, the last point I want to make is that there's no obvious subgenome bias in any of these. Um, so there's no biased fractionation of gene loss in one subgenome versus the other. So this was somewhat perplexing as to why we would have this retain, these retained genes for so long, at least 60 million years after duplication. We looked at tissue-specific expression, um, and so I'm showing you here each of the columns are for a different tissue. And what you can see is that in over uh, over 50% of these duplicated genes, we see differential expression within a tissue of this group of duplicated genes. So this, this, this is sort of a preliminary analysis, but kind of points to possibly uh, tissue-specific um, expression across subgenomes. We can't phase these yet because we don't have the high C data, but soon we'll be able to look at whether there's one subgenome versus another um, being expressed differentially. Next thing we wanted to look at was the timing of this, um, of this whole genome duplication event. Based on the fossil record, we expected that, um, that this event took place around 60, uh, more than 60 million years. So we can look at rates of synonymous uh, nucleotide substitution across the genome. This is here, we're comparing the sucker genome to itself to look at that duplication. Um, you see three peaks. The orange one on the right is sort of an artifact. This is, this is not real. The middle one is the, um, in green. This is the teleos specific uh, duplication event. This, uh, we can date this with sort of back of the angle of calculations at about 350 million years. That seems uh, pretty close. Uh, but the peak, the large peak on the blue represents the sucker uh, specific, catastrophic specific whole genome duplication event. Uh, this one, when we do the back of the angle of calculation, we get a much younger uh, age for this, so about 36 million years. Um, we think this is incorrect and that in, instead this is indicate, indicating a somewhat slower rate of molecular evolution than, um, uh, than, than we see otherwise. But to, to sort of think about this in a little more detail, we, we go back to the, the catastomid phylogeny. I love these old trees. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we've sequenced razorback sucker, which is one of the more derived morphologically specialized species. Um, we start thinking about maybe there's multiple genome duplications in the catastomity. So maybe it's not just a single event, but more recent um, independent events. So we then went across the phylogeny to the, to the essentially the outgroup for the family. Mixocyprinus is sister to all other um, catastomids. It's the only primary Asian species in the extant Asian species in the family. Everything else is North American. Um, so we sequenced this fish genome uh, as well. Um, so we did the same, took the same approach, nanopore and alumina. We knew what we were doing this time, so we got a little bit better assembly, better, uh, more contiguous assembly. Um, and then did the same uh, RNA-seq and uh, uh, methylation uh, analyses. Okay, so long story short, I think I'm running out of time. Um, actually, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was an extra slide. Uh, long story 
story short, um, if we look at mesocyprinus compared to zebrafish, we see pretty much the exact same thing as we saw in the other species, razorback sucker versus um, zebrafish. So these are unpolished genomes, as far as they're sort of hot off the press. I didn't have, we didn't have time to polish them, but um, basically you see the same one-to-one -one conserved, uh, two-to-one conserved uh, symptoms. So here's an example of each of that. Um, very, it looks, the patterns look very similar to uh, what we see in razorback sucker. And again, missing this long arm of chromosome four. So um, we haven't done the full analysis of this genome. We just got the results back, but it looks like this is probably the same genome duplication as um, as uh, we see in razorback sucker. And we also looked at the conserved uh, syntony as well. We see again both subgenomes seem to have uh, retained duplicates, more or less conserved uh, syntony across the genome. So we're trying to analyze this. Once we have high C, we'll be able to to do this uh, more. Completely. So to summarize, uh, it looks like, uh, in agreement with what's been published previously, that there's one whole genome duplication event in catastomas, unless there are some other surprises in the internal parts of the tree. Um, we see low rates of uh, fractionation or gene loss, uh, uh, contrary to what we expected. The Alizine literature said we, we should expect about 50% of genes um, lost. We see much less than that. Uh, we don't know exactly how many, how much less, but that's in the works. Uh, we also see low rate of molecular evolution, some synonymous nucleotide substitutions um, in these, and that's somewhat perplexing. We have some ideas about that, but, um, but decided to hold off on those for now. Onologs are duplicated genes uh, arising from this whole genome duplication are often differentially expressed in our data. Um, there could be some cell or neo-functionalization going on. We're analyzing those data again in more detail to try to sort out um, whether there's any evidence for subgenome dominance or if things are more or less um, parallel across the subgenomes. Um, at this point, we're, we're not able to rule out the possibility of uh, autopolyploidy uh, in these genomes. So that's another surprise uh, compared to the literature. I'm not saying it's necessarily that there, there's autopolyploidy, but um, we don't have any evidence of that based on any kind of obvious differential fractionation. We'll see you back in Cleveland in 2020. <laughs> so hopefully we have an answer. And uh, I'll say thanks to folks in my lab and uh, just say that we're also um, recruiting postdocs and graduate students.